I guess in this video, I'm going to show you how we can have a blazing fast inference model in our local device. So it'll be something like this. Let's have one more example where we are going to have a summarization of our text. In this example, we'll take the text from the Wikipedia. So now you have seen how blazingly fast this inference model is giving you the output of um, any prompt. Let's quickly check how we can implement it or deploy it in our local system. So if we come to github.com Google samples, we can see there are multiple repos which has been um, created by the developer team of Google and we will be interested to click on media pipe. We we'll go to media pipe and then we can click on the examples. And you can see a lot of examples here, audio classifier, customization, face detector, but we are interested in LM inference. So we can see there are four folders, but right now we can go to the JavaScript and we can see there is these three files for the timing. So one is the index.html, the other one is the index.js and readme file. So if you go through the readme file, we can see uh, this web sample demonstrate how to use the LM inference API to run common text to text generation tasks like information retrieval, email drafting, and document summarization on web. So we'll talk about the use case, but by now you might have understood like what kind of uh, use cases we can, you know, um, make use of uh, this large language model. And the prerequisite is a browser with web GPU support like Chrome on Mac OS or Windows and running the demo. So I have already shown you the demo, but let's go through it and let's follow these instructions. So make a folder for the task name task LM task. So if I click on my Visual Studio, you can see that I have created the LM task folder and in the task copy the index.html and index.js. So we have both the files here and then download the Gemma 2B, which is a TensorFlow Lite. 2B IT GPU. So there are two versions of it. One is the int 4 and the other one is the int 8. And in total, there are four large language models or variants which has been provided here. The one is Gemma 2B, which they have already, uh, you know, quantized and provided. The other models are V2, Falcon and Stable LM. So these guys, they have provided this and they have also given us so if we come here, you can see there is this conversion folder is there and it has LM conversion dot notebook. So this is a notebook where they have provided the code, the model and select the backend, whether it is CPU or GPU. And then basically you can download and convert the model, right? And in your index.js file, update the media file name with your model files name. So if we go here, we can see index.js and there's this model file name where we have provided the Gemma 2B IT GPU int 4. So right now we are using int 4 Gemma 2B. So if you click on Gemma 2B, you will reach, you will land up in Kaggle and in the TensorFlow Lite section, you can see there is this variation. There are these variations, but for the time being, you can only use GPU either int 4 or int 8 and you can click on the download button so that it gets downloaded in your device, right? And these are the disclaimer, you can go through it. And then this is the example use, you can implement this experiment in the flow light model completely on device with the media pipe LM inference API. The inference API acts as a wrapper for Gemma, enabling you to store and run the LM on device for text to text generation task. So if we go back, to the repo we can at the end once you have um, basically done all these three things you can basically run this application using python m http dot server 8000 and that is what i did here so you can see here all these apis are blazingly fast because we are using web gpu so as you can see in the prerequisite, a browser with web GPU support. And if you check it on chat GPT or you can Google it also, you can get to know that 
WebGPU is a modern web standard and API designed to provide low and high performance access to graphics and computing capabilities on the web. So it's a successor of WebGL. So this shows that why me MediaPipe package has used WebGPU so that they can, you know, increase the computing capabilities of these large language models and bring blazingly fast uh, inference from the large language. So let's quickly go through the code. So in the repo, if you check the index.html, you will find that there's not much. We are only having this much code. What I did is basically I have beautified this whole UI. You can see this is the UI. What I did is as always, I copy pasted the code from here, pasted it in chat GPT and I have just asked it like improve the user interface and it will give me the improved version of it where you can see like this this uh, styling has been added so you can basically experiment with the ui part i'm not going to uh, get into the detailing of it but um, the intention of showing it um, to you guys so that you guys can come up with um, a better ui apart from you know instead of basically using this ui which has been mentioned in the code because it is very basic so apart from the styling element right we have uh, some some of the elements in the html so we'll see that one by one so we have this input inside the body so you can see this is the input and we have text area and Again, the input for get response, and then we have the result, and again the text area and the script, which is basically calling the index.js. So if we go back to UI, we have this input, and then we have this text area, and then we have this button, and again we have this text, and again we have the text area. So these are all components which we have defined, which we have in the HTML and then we have the script where we are basically calling the index.js where all the logic has been defined. So if we go to index.js, so here we have file set resolver and LM inference, and we are getting it from the CDN from the media pipe task Gen AI. And these are basically uh, the elements which we are getting from the HTML file, the input, output, and the submit button. We have defined the model file name. So in our case, we have it in the LM task itself. This is the model, and we are defining it in the model file here. Then we have this function which is display partial results it, it is more of a streaming function where we get the output and we are showing it on the fly on the ui itself and this is the main function so we are having a constant and then we are defining our lm inference so this is uh, basically on the click it is basically getting the generating the response from the large language model and then we are loading the model here and here we have uh, all the parameters or the hyperparameters where you can play around with it so in max token it was 5.2 but for some experiments what i did is i basically uh, increased it to 2048 then you can provide some different hyperparameters like temperature random seed and top k so here we have the get response and if anything goes wrong we have a catch section where we are basically alerting that failed to initialize the task and this is the run, run demo where the whole function is defined here and we are basically running this run demo. so if you go to lm inference you can see android and ios so those people who are interested in mobile inference they can check out the android and ios you have this uh, readme where you can see the overview and here you can see the screen where we have an interaction with the large language model and uh, you can basically build the demo using android studio i'm not going into details here same goes with the ios so you guys can check out this 
So guys, I'm going to end this video by talking about some use cases. So those guys who are very much interested on um, on-device LLM inferencing, they can definitely use this uh, in their mobile or uh, in their IoT devices. And people who are working on RAG, they can definitely check these large language models because these are not so large and these are very lightweighted uh, models. And uh, personally, I felt like the performance of uh, these LLMs are actually very good. It also depends on your use case if the domain uh, on which you your RAG is working is very much uh, specific to a particular domain, then definitely you guys have to check it. But um, on a generic level, I would say you can definitely go for it and check the performance of it, how it is working on. So that's it, guys. I hope you like this video and you have learned something. Thank you. Have a nice day.